Yeah, before we get into the details, I'd like to talk about uh, the introduction. <laughs> okay, can you hear clear? Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think the major uh, question I'd like to solve through this presentation is to really um, get everyone in the same page, like why do we do this, right? Is it something, you know, like we're geeks and we do something fun, we have free time, or is something we really, really want to have this and uh, in the future our software architecture for uh, BPMU. So uh, the agenda will be the same as many other presentations. We'd like to uh, introduce the uh, BPMU, what exactly is the BPMU look like and what exactly is the problem and which sharpens our motivation. And then we're gonna do our design. We're mostly focused on the motivation part. I guess the details would be, you know, we can talk offline for many of the details because of 30 minutes limit. So what is a problem, right? Um, for many years, we're, we're using our existing emulated VPMU for uh, many years and without any change. It seems like we're running okay. However, you know, recent, recently our customer find like, okay, if somebody really wanna use this uh, VPMU in the VM, things are broken. And either it is high overhead or it is, you know, some, uh, some issues, some errors, some silent errors issues. So, uh, we, which would like to elaborate uh, to the details. Uh, but, but before we get into the details, I'd like to really thank our colleagues. And this is actually a joint effort of uh, three companies, and actually Google, Intel, and AMD. I would like to thank you for the, all the effort, and also appreciate uh, there are many feedbacks from uh, the upstream community as well. And, and be, without uh, your effort, and we're, we're not getting to this stage, this quality, and we're not getting to here. All right, thank you very much for the help. Um, now let's get into the details. So existing, what exactly is, is the existing VPMU look like, right? Existing PMU looks like in this way, a little bit slightly complicated, but actually it's also, uh, it's kind of, also kind of straightforward to any, many other uh, emulated uh, uh, CPU features, right? You can see from the left hand side, you know, the guest PMU system actually running the guest OS, right? Uh, the KVM VPMU sitting between and trying to you know, presenting, hey, we have a PMU, and we provide you uh, counters. But, well, but really, we're not counters. The KVM doesn't have any capability to access the PMU hardware. And because of that, and all of the guest PMU accesses, right, uh, from the guest, all the way will be a max to the KVM. And KVM is not, you know, as we mentioned, is not able to access the hardware counters. It were crafting some, you know, do some transformations and talk to host PMU systems, say, hey, Buddy, can you help me, right? I'm, go I'm gonna create some perf events and do all this stuff, do a transformation. And then host PMU says, okay, fine, I'm going to talk to the PMU hardware. So this is actually a long journey. And every time there is a VM, uh, you know, uh, MSR access to the event selectors, uh, counters, we're gonna go through this long journey. And, and in fact, this journey will come in batches, right? So that is a problem. And the second problem is actually more fundamental problem is that KVM is actually just uh, a regular client of the host BMU system. Host BMU system has many other, you know, uh, uh, clients, such as perf tours, NMI watchdogs, and many other things that can be developed using the host BMU. So what is the problem? The problem is like KVM as a special client need extra information, right? Extra information about, you know, that specific to architecturals, uh, like x86, ARM, specific to the architecture, specific counters, features, things like that. This, to satisfy all of the requirement, host PMU system has to, you know, uh, take the burden, right? Either by elaborating, making this host uh, perf API, you know, system more and more complicated, right? Host P API system is already complicated because you can see that perf events has lots of attributes that, you know, elaborates all of the detailed requirements. But elaborating all of the further details with all kinds of architecture specific things will make things, you know, uh, uh, not very sustainable. That's the, uh, almost the kind of, uh, you know, this is our feelings and, and seems to be the uh, agreement in the upstream communities. So this presentation would like to present a new VPM, you know, trying to, you know, solve these problems, right? So, of course, we would like to elaborate issues like, you know, the first thing we'd like to talk about is high performance overhead. Actually, high performance overhead is actually not found until recently when we are stress testing VPM systems, right? Um, when we were testing the system, especially using perf uh, record, right, inside a VM, running inside a VM, and especially when we're using um, multiple events, the number of events more than the 
the, the counters that EPMU provides. And we will see a very interesting fact that 50% of the CPU time is actually spent on the host. So which means that you are buying 32 gigahertz of you know, CPU in the cloud, you can actually only use <laughs> 1.6, uh, you know, 50% uh, of them. So this is actually very bad. And actually, VPMU is trying to help you, right? You know, finding the problems, finding the, where your performance bottleneck is. But if VPMU takes 50% of your overhead, that means, basically means it's useless, right? And we see this is very common. As long as you use perfect cord, use more than, you know, a couple of events more than the uh, uh, VPMU provides, you're gonna run into uh, these issues deterministically, right? So this is the problem that we, we observe. And this is the, we, we do a perf on the host to see what's really going on with, you know, we, we, we use perf to, to uh, uh, you know, profiling perf, I right? see the host system. We find that interestingly, that the KVM actually spent, you know, majority of the time talking to the perf API, right? In particular, there are three functions, like perf event enable, perf event period, you know, perf event create kernel uh, counters, right? Th those are very details. What does that mean? It means that K KVM, as we mentioned, cannot directly talk to hardware, right? It has to transform, right? It, because the host perf subsystem ask anybody, all of the clients say, hey, you cannot talk to, you know, to me, uh, cannot talk to uh, hardware counters directly. You have to craft a perf event. So in order to do so, we have to go through all of these APIs. So imagine, all of the guests, right, the, the, the guest accesses to the PMU counters, mostly they're in NMI, guest NMI handlers, right? They want to be really fast. They cannot, you, you cannot slow down things as such, right? However, you can see that in host, what do we do? We spend most of time in this, these three APIs, and which includes the invocation of uh, mutex, right? You see that some of the sleepable functions, which really can make things uh, a little bit ugly, right? You can see that from this side, you can see that uh, PMU system software from the guest and PMU in the host are misaligned, right? This is the uh, you know, conclusion we have. Of course, there is a second, pro the, the point is to really, it is, it, it is really ex hard to extend with advanced PMU features, right? We, if we wanna expose more than just regular counters, fixed counters, we want a special counters to be exposed, that increase the burden of uh, perf API. We need to ask perf API, hey, can you express this? And often we're gonna say, we, the feedback we receive is no, we can't, because this is really architecture specific. You know, so then, then we're stuck there, right? Third one is the, the existing VPMU has high or, uh, you know, maintenance cost. We can see that from this long journey, that means anytime a counter, in order to counter to run, we not only go through this, this long journey, but also we, we're gonna have to go through three complicated systems. The guest PMU system has to work incorrectly, KBM VPMU has to work incorrectly, and host PMU system has to work correctly. Any bugs in these, any of these three complicated layers will soon you know, immediately propagate to the wrong result, which end up with sort of you know, floppy result in the, in the, for the cloud usage. And and then lastly is the silent errors. Of course, uh, silent errors means that some of the you know, uh, uh, host level entities may use, hey, I wanna use PMU. I wanna use some higher priority PMUs. And I talk to the host system, hey, prioritize me. Host PMU systems, unfortunately, has no way to tell, hey, KVM, your counters has been preempted. There's, you, you, your counters is actually not running. There's no way for a perf API to tell him this is such a low level uh, information to the KVM VPMU. Therefore, it will end up with silent errors. So the end users running in the VM, when they're doing profiling for their workload, there's no way, they're, they're not you know, aware of that and they will get wrong result uh, deterministically. So this, this is actually uh, also the problem as well. Now we can mitigate this problem actually using you know, sort of uh, the levels, but still the, the problem uh, will in conceptually exist. So with all of that, it actually sharpens the, um, you know, the, the request of a, a new VPM. Actually, this is a really a, a, a strong motivation for us to really have a, 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 you know, a, another VPM that really satisfies the cloud usage, right? If the cloud, want to, cloud users want to use VPMU and they can use this, uh, they can trust the result. They can trust the result, they can get the correct result. I think that's the fundamental goal. 
question. Thank you. Um, uh, you don't mention the context switch time, so is that not uh, significant compared to the other events? The context of the PMU itself, uh, switching that between guests or host processes? Between guests and the host processes? Is As in, when one guest is scheduled out, uh, the PMU context has to be switched uh, right. to whatever else is being scheduled in. So is that not a significant uh, amount is, of time? So, uh, yeah, uh, very good question. So. The majority of the, uh, the, the context switches, the majority of the overhead, we mentioned about high overhead, are two sources. Number one is the guest NMI handler. Guest NMI, NMI handler will periodically be invoked. And inside the NMI handler, there is PMI handler. Of course, PMI is registered as NMI, right? PM, the PMI handler will frequently you know, uh, uh, write to the counters and then adjust counters, you know, sort of things, which will have a lot of overhead. The second source of overhead is the guest CPU, uh, the guest process context switch. Every, you, 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 you as a process, you use these events, these counters. I am not a process, I'm using the different counters. And then when CPU doing the scheduling, there will be you know, overhead as well because the, the, the perp system has to be involved, you know, switch, context switch, your events to my events, your counters to my counters, things like that. So these are, you know, non-trivial, uh, uh, you know, overhead in the existing VPN. So all of this will take a long journey, especially the global counter, uh, global control MSRs. When you say, "Hey, I want to turn on, turn off the BPMU," which basically means that you're going to elaborate, e iterate all of the PMU counter. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, right, something like that. So this is actually a very bad uh, Mingwei, situation, can we and that constantly happens. Mingwei. Can we skip get, skip ahead to the design, to the low-level details of the mediated PMU? I think that'll help answer that sort of question. I think it's the main crux of this. Too. Okay, low-level decisions. Directly get to the design, right? Because of time, I think. Uh, thanks. So the, the, the idea is very simple. We want to do, PMU directly talk to hardware, right? This means that the, the, there are several properties, right? The most important property is like when the guest PMU is running, it takes exclusive ownership of the, uh, the PMU, meaning that nobody else can take it away. You know, there's no chance for any host level entity such as the host PMU to take it away, uh, the PMU counters. So that means this counters, if we expose to the guest, are guaranteed to the guest, right? So the guest will naturally get it, uh, you know, getting with, with correct result. We will get that. Host MI watchdog will be stopped. <laughs> in this design, you know, we'll have to, you have to stop it uh, before you see. We have an alternative like body system which doesn't re rely on host MI watchdog, right? So that's a good question. Um, so even if we pass through all of the PMU counters, PMU MSRs, we have to still do a little bit in mediation, right? Intercepted uh, for uh, event selectors, right? The key reason is because of performance, uh, because of security. Right, because you know, we, we there 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 might be you know CPU erratas. Some of the you know events you know is, you shouldn't touch. Nobody should touch. So this is one reason. And the second reason is like, oh, you 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 have only two vCPUs. You want to access level three counter or level three cache information that you basically leaking other people's information. That's not acceptable. So then this is the second case, the majority of this case. So because of that, we have to do mediation for accesses to event selectors, right? And other than that, we pretty much pass through it. Okay. Um, well, actually, uh, so if we pass through, right, what's the challenge? Seems like it's, it's fine, <laughs> you know, we just pass through, right? Like we just write uh, two lines of code. In fact, majority of the effort actually is spent on a PMU context switch. Right, PMU context switch is one of the m becomes more complicated. Uh, originally, legacy PMU like uh, emulated PMU, we just tweaking the global control MSR, which is very simple, right? But but here, you know, things are become more complicated because guests actually fully own the PMU. So we want to transition to the host, and the host transition to the guest becomes a little bit more complicated. In particular, uh, the property we want to guarantee is like when the control flow enters the KVM from the guest, basically VM exit. Right? The guest PMU has to stop, immediately stop, atomically stop, right? because otherwise 
the counters, which may contain the number of instructions, things like that, will be wrong, right? And the, this, this error, even if it's small, right, it will accumulate as the VM exit continues to grow, grow, and actually the result it becomes finally useless. This is a property we have to guarantee. For any sort of new VPMU, we want to design. So in order to solve that problem, actually we, uh, for Intel and a CP, Intel CPU and AMD, we use different tricks, right? Intel CPU is much easier, much better. There are two mechanisms. The MSR auto load and save, you know, we can basically put in the uh, global control MSR into the auto load, auto save, things are working. Because of VM exit, things are saved. You know, we, we can switch uh, from the gas to global control MSR to zero. And that means everything stopped. The whole PMU world stopped at, at the time of VM exit. Right. Of course, there are some advanced features like VMX capabilities we can also use, which naturally you know, goes well. Uh, for AMD, it doesn't have this mechanism, unfortunately. You, AMD, you have to, you know, if you really want to toggle the global control MSR, you have to do it, right, use instructions, write MSR zero to it, which is bad, right? So in order to prevent this kind of things, AMD use a trick, like, you know, basically, we're intercepting the event selectors. Anytime you in the, the, the guest is trying to access right to the event selectors, we remove the host early bit. So basically means that all of the events running in the guest PMU is actually running in the guest, meaning that anytime you VM exit, it will stop as well. So even if there is no such global control MSR toggling, we can still achieve the same result in AMD CPU. So, so that's basically kind of a nice trick that our AMD colleagues uh, has, has done. Uh, thanks for the work. Any questions for that? If no, I will quickly go through. Um, okay. Um, the, the next challenging question is like, uh, well, for the global MSR, is only one of the uh, you know, PMU uh, counters, uh, one of the PMU uh, uh, components, right? But there are many of them, many others, like event selectors, you know, counters, other global MSRs. Where, where do we do this PMU connect? Where do we do this? Uh, the word switch from the guest to the host, from the host to the guest, right? There are, after several rounds of intensive discussion, there are basically two options, right? We do it every VM exit, or we do it, you know, outside, you know, the, the, in a very external boundary, like in a vCPU loop. There are pros and cons. Maybe, in, you know, Sean, you can provide the, the option three, which maybe in between there is a better, uh, you know, a, a sweeter point uh, in between. But basically we have, uh, very explicitly, we have these two options. If we do it at very every VM ex enter and VM exit, obviously the downside is high overhead. We are 20 MSRs read and write uh, per VM exit. It will takes uh, also takes a long time. Um, however, the, the good thing is like it's it working properly, and because the host side is actually can get in the, all of the information because it get the uh, host PMU get restored at very early stage and immediately after VM exit. Um, of course, option number two is the exactly the opposite. Pro and con is just exactly the opposite, right? Like, the, it has better performance, right? Because we normally, you know, when the VM is running, normally we mo spend most of the time in the vCPU uh, loop, right? KVM run loop. We don't spend much time outside. So we don't, basically, we don't have this PMU overhead, a context switch overhead. But the, the, the downside is like the host PMU side has limited capability. He, he basically hosts lose the capability to providing uh, the KVM uh, run loop because right now KVM run loop belongs to the guest. So that's the uh, m major downside. Um, I think uh, that's need uh, some major effort uh, in the future to improve this. Anyway, quite. Finally, so, anyway. Uh, I guess the current stage. Yes. So I think option two is just straight up off the table. That is not going to be acceptable by anyone. Okay. Um, so, and that's, so option one is the initial merge where we do the functionally correct thing and we get it upstream. And then option three, which isn't listed there, is we do it on demand when we need to switch when the host is actually profiling something and actually has perf events. Is there anything that's stopping us from implementing that? It does not seem conceptually that complex. Right, it's, it's uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think uh, option two is off the table as we never put it up to the table, right? In, in a code implementation, well, we consistently it's off follow the table the because number the one. KVM run loop can call out to crazy amounts of code. And you can get NMI interrupts, you can call into MM, you can do all sorts of things that are technically in the KVM run loop. And so we have to be able to profile those. Right, agreed, actually.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, yeah, the super tight run loop. Um, anyways, my question is really why not go, even in the initial series, land the functional code, but why not go straight to the on-demand on slightly demand? smarter thing? Well, that, that's, that's an advanced feature of this implementation, but we can definitely implement it in our later versions. Our, our currently have the RSV3, and uh, we mostly focus on those, like, because there, there is a perp subsystem interactions. We, we spend most of the time on that part as well. Um, so, yeah, but uh, actually in the future, we can, we can do that. The, the, the concern is like, how do we know if the, the, the guest is providing something? We are assuming a, a proper behavior, meaning that when the guest OS is stopped providing, it will zap all of the counter to zero, things like that, right? That, that, that kind of cleanup operations, if that can be captured clearly, then we, we, we know, okay, the guest has stopped profiling. Let's do not do this connect switch. But I have a slight concerns that if some in some scenarios, guests always do not clean up these events or things like that, how do we know when the guest stop profiling? That, that's, the, that's my main concern. So could you do Because all of this is non-architect, this is kind of a speculation. Could you do something like, if you don't get a PMI for uh, some time, uh, you assume that it's not profiling and you switch to something slower? That's a good point. Uh, but uh, you, you, you in general, second. you cannot rely on PMI. Why some of the counters doesn't even have PMI. Why right? do we care what the guest is doing? We care what the host you, is you, doing. You, you care about the, okay. When, when the guest is doing profiling, you want to do PMU connect switch. No, no, when no, the no, guest no. stops, who cares? Like, load the stuff when you do the architecturally correct thing for the guest, and the rare case is going to, in cloud, the rare case is going to be the host profiling. So optimize for the common case, which is the guest has full control of the PMU, and when the host wants to profile something in KVM, you do the context switch at the vCPU entry exit boundary. So yeah, you have extra overhead, but it's again the rare case, and if you don't want to cause some performance jitter for your guest, you don't profile the guest. Like, why do we have to care what the guest is doing? I don't, I actually don't understand because if the guest is, if, if we always context switch the the guest counters right when we have to to honor the architecture for the guest, we don't have to care what the guest is doing because we're always doing the right thing for the guest. It's going to experience some performance jitter, but right. it's architecturally so, correct. Okay. Right, right, I remember. So what is it suggesting, like, when the guest starts to do, use no, no, no. the PMU? When, it when, the, when the host starts to profile the guest, then you stop switching at the vCPU load and put boundary, and you start switching at the vCPU entry exit boundary so that the host can profile the entire KVM run loop. Okay. And then the host stops profiling that task, or stops doing a system-wide profiling, and you stop switching at the vCPU entry exit boundary, and you go back to the outer high performance boundary. Okay, I think that's, that's, that's doable. I think that's doable. Yeah. So we control well, the host. Have NMI watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we don't have NMI watchdog in this case, but we have a different system called body system, which basically allows, you know, other. Maybe just a counter, um, just speculating here, but there might be speculation uh, boundaries uh, that we might want to avoid, and also confidential compute might not want any leakage. Uh, that might happen because of that. Um, also, I think what you mentioned, option one and then option three, or just straight going to option three, I think option three sounds more like an optimization on top of op option one, and because of that, I think we should do option one, which, which is the right thing first, and not directly go to option three. Do option one, I was just saying, like, why not do it in the same series? You have option one as a intermediate point, but why not go straight to option three so you have the full picture? Um, Fair enough. We care. I was. I was also going to say, why do we care for a different reason? Why do we care about the context switching latency if we haven't worked out that the guest has stopped? Who, who are that? we? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Host. Um, why does? Yeah. Why? Why do we, as the host, care about the guest experiencing more latency right. if so it hasn't correctly cleaned up the counters? If the guest wants to go back to being fast again, it can bloody well do the cleanup properly, and we don't care. It's, it's up to the guest to do that cleanup explicitly and zero every counter so that the hypervisor knows. And if it doesn't, then yes, it gets to mm, keep experiencing the latency. That's, that's another good point. Okay, yeah, thanks. That means the guest knows. 
it, it knows it is not a bare metal <laughs> OS. It knows it's a guest. That feels wrong. Yeah, it seems like we're leaking, sort of, yeah, you're running, because you kind of suddenly get all zeroed. Um, yeah. We've got two minutes left going to David's question about NMI Watchdog. Are there any plans to allow profiling the guests from the host when you have a mediated PMU, or is that just off the table because architecturally neither AMD nor Intel really give us the tools to? Yes, and then the part of the reason we want we cannot be compatible with uh, my watchdog is like you know the, the Intel AMD uh, PMUs designed in a way that is not you know shared across you know guests and hosts. So either party, host or guest, has to take full ownership of that. So that's the current design. Yeah. But, you know, blame the hardware. But I think it's... Uh, <laughs> we, we do that. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah, I have a, one quick question here. I think, uh, it, yeah, it's kind of about the motivation here. I think uh, this is good work from the functionality pr perspective. I test uh, a lot of PMU before. It, it doesn't work well in the guest. So it, it's good to have. But uh, my question is from the performance side. Like I said, uh, uh, Shane said there, uh, why do, do we care about uh, like profiling the guest there? You said that there is like 50% per percent, 50 percent uh, of us. So uh, yeah, the, the uh, point is that if you as the user in the cloud, you're using VMs, then performance really matters. PMU, you want a PMU to have 0% overhead, right? Because when your, your, your application is running, the, PM, the VPM you takes 50% overhead, that means the, perform the, the, the performance of the cloud workload is skewed. Whatever you observe, the result is but garbage. How, how often this would, like in a It will 100% happen. Okay. 100% happens, 50% to 60% or high. If you use perf sampling, using a lot of events, try, try it yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah it I doesn't matter that. which, you know, is QEMU, is cross VM, it doesn't matter, as long as you enable that. This is actually the current situation. So yeah. We actually have it like, couple more minutes margin before the next session. Can you go a bit very quickly into the NMI watchdog since he brought it up? Uh, this is the one in NMI yeah. watchdog. Actually, uh, this is the drawback. Uh, this is the slides, actually. So we, uh, there, there are several drawbacks and, and open discussions. One of them is NMI watchdog. Uh, because NMI watchdog stealing one counters, right, yeah. on ho from the host side. And because the, the hardware design, we have to give the full ownership to the, to the guests. Therefore, NMI watchdog cannot work. And the way we solve that problem is like, well, this is the, actually a new mode of uh, VPM is a new mode. In order to turn it on, we're, we're gonna detect. Is your NMI watchdog on? No, if, if, if so, uh, I'm sorry. I can't turn this mode on, so you have to turn it off. Right? So that, that's basically the trick. And we also use the different vectors, right? The, the KVM PMI has a different uh, no, yeah, you know, vector. I, I would like to understand what are the, okay, each base, base is pretty clear. What is b body hard lock detector? Well, I'm not an expert on that. <laughs> body system is another one that uses a sibling CPU. Watchdog is used to have another CPU that keeps track of, you know, it's just a friend that watches you and makes sure you're making forward progress. Right, so that, that, that's the case. Uh, of course, uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the limitations like host profiling is really limited. Because of that, if, 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 since the guests take full ownership of PMU, uh, sometimes, if from the host side would like to see what's really going on inside gas, that capability is lost. So that's the limitation of this uh, approach. Yeah. Looking forward to the future, uh, AMD's ability to virtualize PMIs if they're delivered through an NMI in the guest LVT entry. Have you eyeballed that for the mediated PMU yet? Uh, yes, we do. Actually, this is something we, we skipped because of this quick. Uh, part. Uh, in order to in, in, you know, increase performance, actually, for Intel uh, CPU, we actually you know, sync the, v, uh, the, the guest, uh, the APIC, the APIC, every, every TPC, uh, you know, the mask, you know, uh, we, we always sync the, the, uh, the KVM, uh, the APIC, every, um, every TPC with the uh, hard roll uh, APIC. Uh, so the mask is sync, then we can reduce the invocation of the, uh, the uh, uh, PMI, and then we can reduce the number of VM exit, and which triggers the number of uh, PMU context switches. Uh, but specifically, so AMD, it's not, 
I don't even think patches AMD's have been not, posted. Yeah, AMD's not, you're right. Well, I don't think, it's, but uh, it's an upcoming hardware feature where if the guest has the, what was it, if the LVT, now there's a enable bit where you can deliver the NMI without taking a VMX oh, yeah, into yeah, the okay. guest. Yeah, so that, has that been eyeballed for the mediated PMU? No, not not in this design. So, but we definitely can change the, this in the future. Yeah, so that you know. I was mostly curious how uh, confident we are that the guest counter, host counter bits in AMD don't have slop, so that we don't end up with an NMI that arrives in the host because we've configured yeah. the LVT the, the to. Good point. Uh, actually, we we actually stress test this quite a lot, right? So for eight CPU, we, we, we basically overloading two VMs, right, in both Intel and, and, and AMD. And we also, at the same time, using host perf uh, to, to sampling to use the same CPU. So the three parties actually stress test. So far, we don't find any, uh, you know, Right, but you would still, you would still have the, the NMI still, logged in host context. It would still be pending in the host. There might be slack, so like the, the when, when the overflow is one, PMI may not arrive. So there's maybe there's a window, like which is like several microseconds or something like that. I, that, that. That could trigger problems, but it, it, Mine's a future thing we should not yeah, it, it seems fine it from our side, yeah. Okay. Thank you.